Okay. All right. So we are going to continue with uh, the fourth and final um, theory of truth. Okay. Fourth and final theory of truth. The other three have been what are they called? Relativism. Coherentism, Coherentism and, pragmatism. and pragmatism. Good. Good. So this last one is called the correspondence. It's not an ism. Is that going to make it easier to understand or remember? Correspondence theory of truth. Okay? Here's, this, here's the main claim. And the rest are just examples. You don't have to write down all the examples if you don't want to. But here's the main claim. A thing or a proposition or an event is true if and only if it corresponds with reality. So pragmatism was a thing is true if it works. Coherentism was a thing is true if it fits. Relative, relativism it was a thing is true if you want it yeah. to be true. This one is a thing is true if it corresponds to reality. Does that make sense to you? Okay, here's some examples. It is raining outside is a proposition, okay? Proposition like here, I'm offering a statement, okay? A proposition, if, it, if we're trying to determine whether or not it's a true proposition, what do we do? You look outside. And look outside, and if it's raining, if it is indeed raining outside, water's coming from the sky and it's not a sprinkler, or, okay? Then is that a true proposition? Yes. If it's not <coughs> raining outside, what does that tell us about the proposition? No, it's, it's not true. It's false. Okay. It might uh, it might not be a lie, but it is false, right? Because there's a lie we usually associate with like someone's trying to deceive intentionally, oh, okay. right? So someone could say of something that's false and not be lying, right? Because they're not they just they're just wrong. <laughs> well, if someone told you it was raining outside, yeah, but if they're like if they really believed that it was raining outside when it wasn't, they're not lying. They're just they're just wrong. <laughs> They're just wrong. They're just wrong, yeah. Okay, here's another one. A ball can be described as red if there is in reality something called a ball and there's something called red. Okay, and that ball has whatever that quality is that makes it appear to you as red. Does that make sense? Okay. So my son, here's another, uh, you know, kind of, you can, these are like stakes in the ground that you can put in, okay? My son was born on June 17th, if in reality he really was born on the 17th of June. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's true, that event like really did happen like that, if it really did happen. This is one of those things where like when we talk about it, you're like, yeah, duh. <laughs> okay, if that's what you're thinking, then you're probably on the right track because it's not that complicated. Oftentimes, and you'll find this in philosophy, we talk about things that you know already, it's just that we've never, no one's ever talked about them out loud in like any kind of like real way, right? Where you like explain it in sentences. But these are all things that you kind of already know about the world, right? It's just that now we're talking about them out loud, <laughs> okay? So they might sound weird, but when you actually think about what I'm saying, you're like, oh yeah, I know that already. And you do, you do know that already, okay? Um, here's a proposition. Allah created the universe. This is a true proposition, if and only, according to correspondence theory, if and only if Allah really did create the universe. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So you good? A thing is true if it corresponds with reality. Now, here are three required elements that we need for truth to occur. Okay, I'm going to write on the, write on the board a little bit. For, for us to have truth, we have to have three things. Okay, we have to have something called a truth bearer. A truth bearer. Think about something coming to you, like a ring bearer, right, in a wedding. Okay, usually a little kid that's usually super cute, hopefully behaves, brings like this little ring, right, on a little pillow or something like that. Okay? Huh? A bear? Like an actual bear? Yeah, that's weird, but whatever. So, right, however it happens, you've got something or someone, right, bearing a ring. That's why they... That's what they call a ring bearer, okay? In this case, we need something called a truth bearer. It comes bearing truth, maybe, okay? It comes bearing truth. We need a truth bearer. This could be a proposition. This could be a thing, like a red ball, or it could be an event, like the birth of my son. Does that make sense? Okay? So we have to have a proposition out there, 
Okay. Now we also have to have something called a truth maker. So this is our like statement. Okay. Our truth bearer. We also have to have reality. Okay. This is our. So we have a statement. We have reality. This is the actual events of the world right out there in here, right? What's really going on. Okay. What really is, what really exists, what's really happening. Okay. Whether or not it's raining, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So look, we have a truth bearer. Okay. This is our truth bearer. This is our truth maker. By truth maker, we mean that this has the possibility to make this true. <clears throat> right. This has the possibility to make this true. How does it make it true? What are the conditions? If what? If it corresponds with reality. How does this make, make this true? Oh, okay. uh, by, true. <laughs> by, uh, by matching, right? Yeah, if they match. Does that make sense? Okay, if they match. So look, keep in mind that we have we have three things here. We have this and we have this. Do you see how these two, this is going to sound real dumb. I'm not trying to be condescending, okay, but I just want to make sure it's clear. Do you see how we have a truth bearer and a truth maker? Those aren't the same thing. You see that? Okay. Well, this is a statement about reality that may or may not match with reality. This is reality and it is what it is. Okay. These aren't the same thing. They're two different things. Okay. So in order for this to be true, it has to match that. That's what this is called. Okay. The correspondence, the line between the two, the correspondence between the two, the correspondence between the proposition about the world and the actual world. Okay. The statement, it is raining and the reality that it is in fact raining. Okay. Now there's, this is called truth. Understand that truth is a relational property between two things. Truth is a relational, under this theory, truth is a relational property between two things. This thing, the statement or the truth bearer, and this thing, the reality or the truth maker. Truth is that relationship between those two things. If they don't match, then there is no relationship, there is no correspondence, there is no truth. Okay? Is that clear so far? Does it seem to be, how many of you are like, yeah, this seems to be like, duh. I mean, I'm using weird words like truth bearer and truth maker, but like the concept, does it seem intuitive to you? Ish? Okay. Okay. Mixed bag, but that's all right. Okay. So as I just said, truth is a particular relational property between a proposition and reality. Now it's super, super important that you understand that we're talking about three things, two things and a relationship. Okay. So that's three total. Yeah. Okay. So, if you're going to have a relational property, understand, this is important because it, it solves one of the problems that relativism presents. Okay, so hang with me for a second. If you have any kind of relational property, that means that you have to have at least two things. So if I said, if I, if I gave you a relational property like larger than, how many, and if I said there's larger than in here, in the room. How many things would have to be in the room for there to be that two. larger than? Two things, right? One of them would have to be larger than the other one. Does that make sense? Then that property would be in here. Okay? What if I said there's redness in here? How many things would have to be in here? At least uh, one more than, you know, at least more than one. Minimum how many things? If there's redness in here. Doesn't really explain what's got to be in. I thought it would just be one thing. That was one thing, red. one thing, as long as it was red. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If I said there's redness in here, you wouldn't say, oh, there'd have to be two things, right? But if it's violent. Okay. How about that, right? Then, then, I, then my statement would be false. There wouldn't be redness in here. Well, it's redness, though. Maybe red. Purple, purple, shade. Yeah, okay. Redness. There's red. There's red. Okay. Don't let that trick you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How about mother of? Right. If I'm going to say that I'm the mother of Whitley, 
we have to finish that sentence with a whole other person, right? Mother of, okay? There has to be, unless you're like swearing or something. Mother. Okay. There has to be another person, right? There has to be two things. There's the mother, and then there's the person that you're the mother of, right? But mother of is the relational property between me and my son. Does that make sense? Okay. If there's a relational property, there has to be two things and two different things, and those things can't like be the same thing. Okay. The truth bearer or the statement and reality can't be the same thing. You see that because one's a statement about reality and one's reality. One might be true. One just is. Is that clicking with you? Okay. 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 Let's, just, let's keep rolling. You guys are doing good. Okay. Far as we know, I say correct in quotations. As far as we know, this is the theory that's widely accepted by major philosophers to be the correct theory. And by correct, they mean it doesn't lead to any logical contradictions like we have with the others. Okay? It doesn't. Now it may, it may have its own problems, but it doesn't lead to any logical contradictions such that such that we'd be like, this is weird, like it can't happen. Okay. Most major philosophers say that the correspondence theory of truth is, is a good, solid theory. Probably that's what truth is. Truth is a relational property between two things, a truth bearer and a truth maker. Statement about reality and reality. Okay? Um, before we go on to the scorecard, let me, let, me, let me try to tie it together. Remember that the problem with relativism, what was one of the major problems with relativism? Relativism. What do people that are relativists, what do they confuse? Truth yeah, they're, they're the facts, right? Yeah. Or reality and their opinion about reality, right? Because that's what relativism says. It says whatever you think is the case, whatever you want to be the case, that is the case. Okay? Do you see how it takes these two right here and squishes them together? Right? Yeah. Whatever you say about reality actually is reality. So it doesn't, it's not concerned about it matching reality or anything like that. It literally becomes reality. That's the problem with relativism, right? Because we see that a statement about reality and reality itself can't be the same thing. Those are clearly two separate things. And just by wanting it to be the same, you can't make them the same thing. Right? That's, it just can't happen. There's two separate things. It'd be like taking two people and making them the same. I mean, you can't. They're separate, autonomous things. Okay? That's the big problem that relativism or any theories related to relativism have, is that they take this statement about reality. And you, now listen, even under correspondence theory, you can make any statement you want to about, I mean, you, you, this is where you do you, right? You make any statement you want to about reality. Okay? But what follows from that? Some statements are going to be, yeah, because some statements are going to match reality and some statements aren't, right? Seems reasonable, okay? Now, you might not like that. <laughs> you might really want this to be true, that there's $100 million in your checking account. But if it doesn't match with the reality, that's going to be a letdown. But it's going to match with reality. It's going to be true. Okay, so what the problem with relativism is, is that it squishes those two together. Okay, the statement and, and reality. It, it says that truth bearer and truth maker are the same thing. When they can't be the same thing. These, those are two completely different things. Okay, that's the problem with relativism and that's the solution that correspondence theory offers. Okay, all right, where did I put my, I'm throwing stuff. Okay, so let's score this out, okay? This is the theory we're at, right, that a statement or an event or a proposition is true if and only if it corresponds to reality, if it matches reality. A statement is true if it matches reality. It's raining is a true statement if it matches the reality that it really is raining. Okay? Does that kind of theory explain all or most truths? Can you think of one that it doesn't explain? The subjective view. Personal view. Okay. What do you think about that? Subjective truths. Are you still, let me ask it this way, are you still allowed to have 
your own opinions and beliefs underneath correspondence theory. If they correspond to reality. No, that's not. Uh, no, I didn't say are they true. I said are you allowed to have them? Like with the ice cream yeah. thing, like if that's your favorite flavor. Right. So, so let me ask you that. Right. So, if I say my favorite flavor of ice cream, this is a really good question. If I say my favorite flavor of ice cream is chocolate almond, is it? Now, I asked this when we were first talking about subject, subjective, and objective. Is it objectively true for you that my favorite flavor of ice cream is chocolate almond? Yeah, that's really your favorite flavor. Yeah. If I'm telling the truth, right? If I'm being sincere about it, yeah. 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 It's true for you. That my favorite flavor is chocolate almond. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm yeah. telling you, it really is true. Okay, so so in that sense, yes, we're allowed to have our own beliefs and you know personal opinions and preferences and stuff like that because those are subjective truths and they match reality. Is it really the case that my favorite flavor is chocolate almond? Only I know. But what if I tell you that it's what if I tell you that that is true for argument's sake? That it really is true. Yes. Then yeah. Right? That statement, my favorite flavor of chocolate and almond ice cream, is true. It does match with reality. It even matches with your reality. Because your reality, right? We all share, there's only one. We all share the same reality. Your reality is, in your world, my favorite flavor is chocolate and almond. So when I make that statement, it's still true for you. Does that make sense? Okay? It's not your favorite flavor, but that's not what we're talking about. It's all about me. <laughs> Okay, so does it allow for subjective truths? I mean, clearly it allows for objective truths, right? This kind of truth where you have a statement and then you're supposed to go see if it matches with reality. Objective truths are the kind that you seek out external evidence for that, right? So we make the statement, it's raining. We go to seek out external evidence. We go look out the window. Anybody can look out the window. Anybody can determine whether it's raining. You don't have to have special insight to do that, right? Okay, that's an objective claim. So clearly we see that it deals with objective claims really well. So the question is a good one. Does it deal with subjective claims? Does it allow you to have your own preferences and opinions? It deals with the truth. And if the truth is subjective or objective, it doesn't matter if it's true. Okay, but this is defining truth, right? So it's saying that truth is a relational property between a statement and reality. So does it allow for the reality of subjective opinions? Yes. Yes, it does. It does. So I think that it explains all or it allows for all or most truths. Okay. Does it explain data better than the other theories? Given this is the last theory we're going over, yeah. compare it to the others. Sure. Yeah. I, I think so. I think so. Is it easy to believe? Yes. yes. Yeah, absolutely. It just says it's true. If it's true. If you know it <laughs> it's true if it matches. Yeah. It, it, it's true if it matches. If it's raining and you see it's raining, then it's true. Then that statement is true, yeah. This is why I asked you a little while ago, does it seem intuitive to you? Does it seem like, yeah, this is the way the world, yeah. why are we even talking about this? This is the way it the world like works, pretty, right? Uh, common sense, you would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it theory. seems grounded, right? It yeah. seems intuitive. Okay, good. Does it fit with your firmly established beliefs like gravity and math and yeah. amount of money in your checking account and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? I mean, you might not like it, but... It but makes sense, true, yeah. right? Really okay. Through. How about um, simplicity? Is it not overly complex? It's pretty no, basic. It's, it's simple. It's pretty basically laid out. It's not too much. Like it just says it's, if it corresponds, then it's true. Yeah, I think they're pretty simple. I mean, some people have said in the past that it's true. said in the past, this is too confusing. This truth bearer, truth maker, relational property, that kind of thing. I, I agree. Those are weird terms. Right. And again, it's one of those like this is something you all know, but you probably have never we've never talked about it. Right. And so they're going to sound weird to you. But my question in response to that sort of objection is, are the terms weird or is the concept weird? The terms are weird. Just the, right. The verbiage is simple, the right. Right. The theory itself and concept is pretty simple. If it matches, it's true. <laughs> you can sum it up just like that. OK. OK. So, yeah. Way better. Score. Way better scorecard on this one. Yeah, way well, better. This is the first one we've gotten a yes on. Yeah, in any. I mean, the yeah. closest we got was a question mark. No question yeah, like, well, maybe. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's talk about some implications. Since this is a good theory, okay, so far, let's talk about some implications of correspondence theory. Because 
if we're going to go by this, then that means we have to like, we might have to shift some things around a little bit in our brains and in the way that we practice life, okay? If correspondence theory is the way things are, if this, that really is what truth is, then that means that we might not know the truth in a particular, in any particular area. Pick one. Okay? We might not know the truth. So look, we've got this statement and we've got reality. Okay, reality's there, <laughs> whether you know it or not, right? It's there when you're an infant, it's there, right? It's always there, okay? You might not know it even enough to make a statement about it. Might not know it. Does that seem real? That seems like that happens, right? Which is why we like learn things and stuff like that, okay? There could be several possible options okay, of what truth might be in a particular area, okay? As you learn stuff, you could make a bunch of different statements. You could make a statement about reality and then nix it later and be like, nope, it's that, and then say, nope, it was that, right? You can make lots of different statements about reality. As you learn things, you're going to make propositions that are based on how you view this, right? And because you're generally good people, you're trying to make statements that match with reality because you know intuitively that makes the most sense. But you might not know it, right? So you're trying to find out, and then you make a statement, and then you realize it's not true because it doesn't match with reality. So you nix it, and you make another one. Does that make sense? Okay, this is kind of, this is how we do life, right? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. The implications of correspondence theory, again, may say that we don't know, we don't know what, what truth is in a certain area, but then another one would be we might know, but we might have to argue for it. Okay? We might know what it is, but we might have to argue for it. Can we, under relativism, could we argue for what we think is true? If everything is relative, can we argue for what we think is true? Yeah, no. would, that be a, would that be a good thing to do, like a productive use It'd of time? Why, was that, why is it pointless? But because everything, true. everything we claim to be true is true, so what's the point in arguing? Yeah, it's just, we're just picking fights, mm -hmm. right? Just wanting to argue or wanting to piss somebody off, right? But there's, there's no progress to be made there because whatever they think is true is true, what, you're not, right? You're not going to convince them. Anymore. No, we're not really doing anything because they're they're they really do have a truth and we do have a truth, okay? But if if this is the only thing that can make right, remember this is a truth maker, okay? If reality is the only thing, there's only one thing and it's the same for everybody. If it's the only thing that can make something true, we hold, you know, we have this statement. Somebody else holds this statement. Somebody else holds this statement. This is us. We think there's a correspondence between this and reality. Somebody else doesn't think so. They think it's this one. Okay? Look, we're making two sta different statements about the same thing. How many people can be right in this scenario? One. Only one can really match. Right? Only one can really match. And so if it's important, now if it's not important, don't argue about it, right? Duh. But if it's important, then we might have to argue for it to sh give evidence to show, no, look, my statement really does match with reality. Yours really doesn't. So you ought to change your mind, okay? Does that make sense? We might have to argue for the truth. We might have to actually set a, give a case for it, build evidence for it, okay? We don't have to do that with any of the other theories. If it works, if it fits, and if I want it, is all the evidence you need in the other theories. So you got your work cut out for you here, okay? But remember, claims to objective truth require objective evidence, okay? If you're going to make a claim that says this is true for everybody, then you're going to have to go get evidence that also, that's also accessible to everybody. You make objective claims all day long. Well, I mean, you go for it, right? Do it. But just know that you're going to have to back that up with evidence that doesn't just come from in here. It comes from out there. Everybody can go look at it. Okay? It's like going to the library or something, right? You could have a book or maybe your journal, right, that only you look at, okay, only you, right, only you have access to. A library, it's like, come with me. We'll both walk into the library together. Everybody's on equal footing. All the books are accessible to everybody. Does that make sense? Okay? Okay. Here's another implication. We already kind of addressed this, but that if correspondence theory is true, 
People are going to make multiple claims, but it means that some claims are going to be true and some claims are going to be false. They're going to think that they correspond, but really they don't. Okay? Really there's no matching there. No matchy matchy. Okay? They don't correspond. Some are going to be true, some are going to be false, meaning some are going to match reality, some are not going to match reality. The ones that do not match reality are false. Okay? Including our own. <laughs> so be ready because you're probably going to encounter some statements that you make or, or beliefs that you hold or conclusions that you've come to that actually don't match reality. Really, when you really look at, look at it honestly. Be prepared. And then what are you going to do, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, what are you going to do when you discover that your claim does not match reality? If you continue, what if it's something you've held your whole life? What if you continue? What if you like, I know this doesn't match with reality, but I'm going to keep going. Anyway, what, what kind of person does that make you? <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> Incorrect, right? Not reasonable, because what reason do you have to continue? Maybe I've always done it this way. I like it better this way. Those are reasons, but they're really crappy reasons. Do what? And they're stagnant, yeah, yeah. You end up just kind of, yeah. You actually become, some people think, well, that if I make a stand on something that isolates me, right, that, that kind of like makes me, I don't know, somehow like here I am taking a stand and, you know, I'm not like in the group or whatever. Okay, do you realize that if you don't live your life by statements and conclusions that match reality, that actually isolates you more, okay? Because you're not on board with reality, which is a scary place to be, okay? Not like a hobby or something. I mean, go get a weird hobby, but be on board with reality with the rest of your real life, okay? Um, listen, it also means that some worldviews slash religions, because remember, all religions are worldviews. Not all worldviews are religions, but some religions slash worldviews are accurate and some are not. I don't mean the way people practice religions. I mean the claims of the system itself. Yeah. Okay? Some of them are going to match reality and some aren't going to match reality. Okay? There legitimately is Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Look it up. Yeah. It's real. Awesome. Okay? Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. So does that match? The question is just the name Spaghetti Monster. Does that match reality? Can I go find objective evidence for a flying spaghetti monster? Yeah, Maybe. Job. That's a job right there. Yeah. I mean, go for it. Come back to class and bring me something. Yeah, yeah there's there's a girl that does that for a living. She's found 16 new species just last year. So far, <coughs> go this far to say, so far, no objective evidence for the objective claim that there is a flying spaghetti monster and it's also God. Okay? I mean, if there is. If there happens to be some, you know, then we'll deal with that when we come to it. But okay, but so far that's not an accurate claim because it doesn't match with reality. You realize what? I've just made a judgment call on a religious claim. You realize that? That's because religious claims are largely objective claims. They're claiming that this is the way the world is. This is the way reality is. So your job as reasonable, thoughtful human beings is to select one that best matches reality. Like, in your opinion, best matches. Mm, but it doesn't have to just be your opinion, because they're making objective claims, so there should be objective evidence, right? So you look and see which evidence is the best, which, which has most evidence, which one best matches reality. I Probably, you're going to be, in my experience, you're going to find a ton of them that get awful close. So you're going to have to choose between good and better. Right? It's not going to be like, oh, well, they're not all going to be like flying spaghetti monster, and then there's going to be one that arises as, you know, like a phoenix from the ashes, okay? There's not going to be, there, there's going to be some that are going to compete, okay, for real. But your job is to find the one with the best objective evidence and the one that best matches, makes claims that seem to match reality. Okay? I'm not just talking world, I'm not just talking religions, although they, they, mat, they matter in this category. I'm talking any worldview. Humanism. Okay, any, any, naturalism, any worldview. Pick the one that best matches reality. Okay? All right. And the law of non-contradiction, uh, that's what tells us that some claims are true and others are false. Because we can't have 
two competing claims that are both true in the same way and in the same sense. Yeah. All right, you good? Okay, another implication. There is a truth that is independent of our mind. There's subjective truths that are in our minds, right? We have privileged access to that. But this means this is reality. This is not in anybody's mind. This is what it is, okay? So this means, this. if this theory is correct, it means that there's a truth out there. There is truth out there that we don't have any control over. It just is what it is. That means we got to go find it. We got to figure it out. We can't just declare it like we can in relativism, right? I declare this to be the way the world is. It doesn't work that way. So that means we have to go find it. And it also means that it's there whether or not we know it, whether or not we like it, whether or not we agree with it. It's still there and still operating. Okay? So it's up to us in order if we're going to live grounded, rational, reasonable lives and even lives that actually contribute to human flourishing and our own thriving. If we're going to live those kind of lives, lives that matter, right? Lives that contribute, lives that actually change the world. If we're going to do that, we got to figure out what the world is. What's it like? And then get on board and then figure out what's wrong with it and change it. <laughs> Okay? But you can't do that by just declaring whatever you want to be the case, and then it is. Okay? So, is this comforting to you that there's a truth independent of our own minds? Is this comforting, or is this not? Does this make you uneasy? Comforting. I think it's comforting. Comforting? Not comforting? Why? Tatiana. I don't know. I don't really know that anything. Okay? That's exactly it. That's exactly right it. You can go find the truth, the real truth. Look, if everything was subjective, could you go find the truth? You could make up the truth. Yeah. But how many of you are really that much of an egomaniac that you really would be like, you know, let me at it, and I will create the truth? <laughs> it's a good day or bad day. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? Sketchiness. But I, I get what you're saying, Tatiana. There's, there is this idea of, like, there's really important stuff that I might not know. Right? If it's out there and I don't know it, it's like, nah, right? This should motivate you to go and find truth, but also like figure out the way the world is, really is, but also to look inside and make sure that you don't have any false conclusions that you're just holding on to because you just want to, or because that's just what your mama taught you, or because, right? Given that your mamas are all, you know, relatively reasonable people, some of you are like, you don't know my mama, right? But, Given, given that they are, or whoever, you know, whoever was had the privilege of raising you, okay? Given that they're reasonable people, probably what they taught you is the way the world is. But don't hold on to something just because they told you that, right? Make sure that you go out and find reasons of your own, objective evidence of your own, to hold up that belief. Okay? Go do it. Go get after it. Be your own person. Reminds me of Reminds you of what? Waterboy. <laughs> My mama always said. Okay. What do you think now? Give me your give me your thoughts, just you know, on anything about this whole exploration of truth I'm, in general. I'm very glad the first period of English. Okay. Like relativism. Oh, that that gave me such a headache. Okay, so glad glad the first we're done with the first three. Found we found something better. What else? What else do you guys think? We got time. Just relax and sit in it for a minute. This is important stuff. And don't check out just yet. Let it spin around in your brain for a second. What do you think? I wish today's world was more reflective of the fourth one. Okay. What do you because mean? Like, how is it not? Expound on that a little bit. Because the fourth one is. Reality is and only is one reality, and it must be that reality to be true. But the world is so divided and so diversified with so many different thoughts, so many different beliefs of the truth, mm -hmm. so many different ideas. They're all anchored on, like you said, they're all anchored to evidence, but the evidence, like the evidence is all can't be true. Mm -hmm. Because if everything that had evidence was true, then there'd be more than one reality. So if I think something, but I have my own evidence behind it, and you think something, but you have evidence, mm -hmm. and then everybody in here had to pick between us two, that doesn't make it both true. Correct. That's relativism. 
Correct. And right. that's how the world is. Everybody's different. Everybody's diversified. Everybody has their own religion. Everybody has their own belief. Everybody has their own culture. Yeah, and they all bring in evidence of some kind. They yeah. all have yeah. evidence. So, so what, you just can't be like evidence. Yeah, evidence. exactly right. Work. So what do we? Have, what's what's our job then? I mean, the first task is to amass evidence, right? If we don't have any, then we're already behind the behind the eight ball, right? So what's what's our next task? Through the diversity, you examine the truths and the evidence inside. <coughs> Yeah, so you look at the evidence, right, and see which one's better. So if I came to you and said, well, I think this is the way it is because the flying spaghetti monster told me, I'm bringing evidence, but my evidence is bad, right? So, so this is where we were talking about you might have to argue for the truth. So we have really well-meaning, very sincere, like reasonable people both looking at the same reality and saying it's this, and the other person says, nope, it's this, right? Now, because we have the background already of they both can't be right, they could both be wrong, <laughs> right? So you come in there and say, nope, both of you are out to lunch. It's the third thing, <laughs> right? You could do that, or you could examine the evidence for why they think what they think and, and look at their claim. Look at the claim they're making about reality. Does it match? Does it match with reality? Look, a lot of things can cloud our vision of reality. Right? Things like um, our experiences and the way we were raised, prejudice and bias. Okay? Um, even religious claims. Okay? And other worldview claims. These can, these can affect, even like our emotional state, like you're asking, is it a good day or a bad day? Our emotional state. Right? This, we know this all the time. This is a minor thing, but this happens all the time. Right? We, we go into it having woke up on the wrong side of bed and we amass evidence toward the fact that it's a bad day. Right? It's just bad. Everything's bad. When really, probably it was a normal day. We yeah. just saw it all as bad. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay? So we do this all the time. Things cloud our view of reality, but that doesn't change the fact that reality is, and it is a certain way, regardless of how we see it or not. Okay? That's the comforting thing, Tatiana, about, about correspondence theory, is that you can actually kind of take it to the our bank. Yes, take it to the bank that reality will remain the same. Our job is to do our best to see it clearly and to, then to make reasonable claims about it, statements about it that are supported by good evidence. Does that make sense to you? So now the hard part begins, really, because now what you need to do is look at the claims, look at the way that you think reality is, the way you think the world works, and see if it really matches and see if you have good evidence for that. And if you don't, I've kind of ruined your life. Okay, because if you don't, then you got to change it or risk being a really unreasonable, ungrounded person. Okay, the people whose ideas are grounded, reasonable, and match reality, those are the ideas that change the world. Because you see this, most people don't have that. They just click along in life with their own, right, however they were raised or whatever they, really, whatever they want to think. Okay, kind of trial and error. It's like, have, like going bowling with those bumper guards, you know. <laughs> You chuck one down there and it goes boom, 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 all the way down. That's how I bowl. I mean, okay. So like, right? That's what most people do with their life, right? I mean, they bump against the sides that right won't kill them. Okay, make sure they don't die. But other than that, they just kind of try and make it. Okay. If you want to change the world, you absolutely can. You don't have to be like really special. You don't have to be like famous or rich or anything. You just have to have ideas that have evidence and that match reality, and then push for them, argue for them. And the only way that you can do that is if there is one reality, one reality, okay, that doesn't change and that you see it clearly and have claims that, that match that and that, that are strong and backed with evidence, then go get them. Man, go do it, right? You seriously could do some serious things if, if you saw the world that way and if you sought to live your life and order your life that way. But that might involve you making some serious changes. How did you say like, stay objective? Yeah, I mean, allow yourself, allow yourself subjective truths. That's cool, right? Just don't make those into objective truths, yeah. right? Keep them in there. Keep them in their place. That makes sense. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay, um, you guys ha are going to have a reading assignment, okay? And then next time we're going to go over um, a study guide for your test over this truth stuff. Mm -hmm. Are we testing on Friday?